am so fortunate to have such great sponsors on this channel. Our sponsors, as well as our patrons, are the people who keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta so I can continue delivering videos to you multiple times a week. I am so lucky to be a part of Gnostic TV, to have a SIA as a sponsorship, and to now be sponsored by the incredible Spooky2 company. Spooky2 is like a rife machine generator to help you in your journey through this human experience. If you want more information on Spooky2 and what it can do for you, there will be a video down in the description box. If you would like to purchase Spooky2, there are a few different discount codes that you can do, all of which you can, again, find down in the description box below. For the 11 year anniversary of Spooky2, for particular products that are listed for the anniversary sale, you can get 9% off of these said products by entering Happy Bryce in checkout. For all additional products, the regular products, you can get 5% off by entering Bryce Watson when you check out. Here is a little clip of what Spooky2 can do for you. Hi, Joan, Echo, and the Spooky2 team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky 2 journey. Spooky 2 has been superbly special for my partner and I. I'm actually sitting in the scalar field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements. We hardly take them. We used to take them to support and supplement our well-being. But I've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth. The skin's gotten uh, beautiful. The DH experimental frequencies, I've been experimenting with a lot of them. We have such good strength in our body. We don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever. Peter, he has hay fever, but this time, I've started using the Immune Super Booster and oh my God, it is magic. Uh, we recently this year purchased the remotes as well. So we use our DNA clipping and we put our clippings in it. And uh, it's just been so beautiful and profound. And I have always been, so I pray daily, I meditate daily. And I've been sitting in the scalar field and meditating and praying and my psychic abilities, my connection to the divine, if I just want to put it in a nutshell, is just increasingly becoming so potent. I've been using the 12 strand DNA activation as well and the DH experimental frequencies just to see how it goes. And the, the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field. I'm an energy healer. I take clients through um, quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also, I can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement, right? And if people were to not believe this, all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is. I can't like recommend this more to anybody like so yes much love and gratitude thank you for listening and uh, i could share so much more but i'd like to wrap this up now thank you Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Um, this video today is a video that was inspired by a comment that was left by a viewer under one of my videos regarding the Bolsheviks and the Romanovs. This comment was pretty um, critical of me for sharing a video about leading up to, to the Bolshevik Revolution following the um, mainline historical narrative. And if you guys have been following me for a while now, you know that I am fully, fully aware that there are multiple timelines at play. You know that I'm fully aware 
that um, the historical narrative we've been given might not be the accurate one. In fact, I pretty much say that in most of my videos. However, with that being said, in my opinion, when it comes to more modern world history, meaning into the 20th century, um, I tend to take that history a little bit more at face value, um, simply because we have ancestors like grandparents that actually lived during these times. Uh, for example, I shared this over on Aquarius Rising Africa, Anastasia Romanoff was born in 1901, Alexei Romanoff was born in 1904, my great-grandfather Paul was born in 1901, and my great-great-aunt Millie was born in 1904. We talked about this side of my family. If you missed that video, I'll, I'll link it down below. But I remember Paul. I, Paul died in 1986. I have a few memories of him, and I knew Millie. Millie died in 1996. I was 13 when she died. So when we're talking about the 20th century especially, we have people that lived these experiences. So when we're looking at things like World War II, and this commenter challenged my intelligence over the Bolshevik Revolution in reference to World War II, which the two are not, you know, nowhere in the Bolshevik Revolution video did I even mention Hitler because that wasn't a part of Vladimir Lenin's story, you know, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. You know, but when we're talking about World War II, that was less than a hundred years ago. I had a friend growing up whose grandparents were young in Germany when World War II was happening. And even though they themselves were not Jewish, they lived in terror of what was going on. And when it was over, they immigrated to the United States. And, and we have so many stories of that. We see people with their tattooed numbers. You know, we know that there were horrific things that were actually happening in, um, in Germany and in, in Europe during this time. And I understand that there is a conspiracy going around um, the quote unquote disclosure or truth or community that maybe tells a different story of Hitler. And this particular story always rubbed me the wrong way and always seemed to me like it was junk conspiracy. The powers that be in this world, the bad guys, whatever you want to call them, they are masters at mind control. They are master manipulators. As my boyfriend has pointed out before, they have studies on the human brain and the human psyches that we're not even aware of. But one thing that we do understand is that the bad guys knew that this great awakening was coming. Astrologically, it was coming. And so they were going to have things in motion and people in motion to try to derail those that were going to be figuring things out. And with that, not only comes controlled opposition, but also call, comes what's called junk conspiracy. Junk conspiracy is conspiracy theories put out there that aren't real. And what happens with these junk conspiracies is it puts us into a, a junk conspiracy cul-de-sac where we're just going around and spinning in circles, believing fiction, instead of looking over here at what's actually going on or working on ourselves. One thing that scared me about the whole Hitler narrative that's available on like Telegram, that maybe, let me think of another word for a name for him just because of the album. Let's call him Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. So Hitler is Mr. Jones, okay? So the atrocities that Mr. Jones did, there's this theory that Mr. Jones was actually a good guy in the truth of the world and that Mr. Jones was going after the bad guys and that's the people he went after and hurt. And that's just simply not true. That is simply not true. And I think it's terrifying. In my opinion, it's, it's terrifying that there are truthers who believe that what Mr. Jones did was good. Anytime you are violent towards a person, that's not good. Anytime you enslave a person, that's not good. 
And I thought, you know, I was, I was like, let me just, cause I know the law of one speaks about Mr. Jones will say, and I thought, let me go back and pull up what the law of one says about Mr. Jones. And again, this is not me telling you what to think. This is me just showing you a different perspective. Um, I think it's probably for the best if we understand that racism and unaliving that these are not good things. I think that's for the best that we, we, we understand that. I hope we can understand that, that any violence, especially towards someone who hasn't hurt you is, is not good. I hope we can understand that. Anyway, let's look at, um, let's look at what, what, what Ra has to say in the law of one. All right. So Adolf, We'll say Jones, Mr. Jones. Questioner. I'll just ask about Orion. You mentioned Orion as this as a source of some of the contacts of UFOs. Can you tell me something of that contact, its purpose? Now we've spoken about this before in other parts of the law one, they make it very clear that any type of extraterrestrial contact is always negative. Uh, the good extraterrestrials are never going to try to intervene with our free will right? Ra. I am raw. Consider, if you will, a simple example of intentions which are bad, good. This example is Mr. Jones. This is your vibra vibratory sound complex. The intention is to presumably unify by choosing the distortion complex called elite from a social memory complex and then enslaving by various efforts, those who are seen as the distortion of non-elite. There is then the, con the concept of taking the social memory complex, thus weeded and aiding it into a distortion thought of by the so-called Orion group as an empire. The problem facing it, them is that they, they face a great, great deal of random energy released by the concept of separation. This causes them to be vulnerable as the distortions among their own members are not harmonized. Can you tell us what happened to Mr. Jones? I am raw. The mind-body-spirit complex known as Mr. Joan, Jones is at this time in a healing process in the middle of the astral planes of your spherical forward fields. Now let's, let's let me explain this for a little bit. So raw refers to our bodies, our lives, as the mind-body-spirit complex. So the mind-body-spirit complex known as Bryce, right? Known as, as Mr. Jones, right? In the middle of the astral planes of your spherical force field. So that means only third density, the, the density that we're on right now, has an astral plane. So he's stuck on the astral plane, kind of being held in a healing process. So this entity entity was greatly confused and although aware of the circumstances of change in vibra vibratory level associated with the cessation of the chemical body mind complex nevertheless needed a great deal of care questioner i would now like to ask for the same type of information in respect to mr jones you have given a little of this already it is not necessary to recover what you have already given but if you could complete that information it would be helpful so these two different set these are two different sessions on two different days see they've got the marker if you have your log one book you can see so they're asking Ra to elaborate on what he means by mr jones being held in a healing sphere on our astral plane so Ra is going to go on to explain this i am Ra. in speaking of the one you call mr jones we have some difficulty due to the intense amount of confusion present in the entity's life patterns, as well as the great confusion which greets any discussion of this entity. Here we see an example of one who in attempting, an, an attempting activation, okay, let me start off again. Here we see an example of one who in, in attempting activation of the highest rays of energy while lacking the green ray key canceled itself out as far as polarization either towards positive or negative so the green ray key is the heart so they talk about service to self doesn't they skip the heart the green heart chakra so this entity was basically negative okay this entity mr jones was basically negative 
not a good guy. He was on the service to self path Hitler, Mr. Jones. However, its confusion was such that the personality disintegrated, thus leaving the mind-body-spirit complex unharvestable and in much need of healing. This entity followed the pattern of negative polarization, which suggests the elite and the enslaved. This being seen by the entity to be a helpful nature for the uh, social stru structure. However, in drifting from conscious pol polarization into what you might call a twilight world, where dream took place of events in your space-time continuum, this entity failed in its attempt to serve the creator in a harvestal harvestable degree along the service to self. Thus, we see the so-called insanity, which may often arise when an entity attempts to polarize more quickly than experience may be integrated. We advise and suggest caution and patience in previous communications and do so again using this entity as an example of the over hasty, hasty opening of polarization without due attention to the synthesis and integration mind body spirit complex to know yourself is to have the foundation upon a firm ground. So let me explain what Ra is saying here. He is saying that Mr. Jones came to this earth and was taking the service to self path. So the service to self path is the negative path. We have service to others, which is the positive polar polarity and service to self, all leading to eventually they bleed back in together to the wall of one. So how do we know he was on the negative path? Because he believed in worshiping the elite and enslaving the non-elite. He communicated with the Orions to build the Orion Empire. He believed, Mr. Jones believed, that there was an elite bloodline. He believed that there were elite people and that the non-elite needed to be enslaved. That is 100% negative polarity. Okay? So, anybody that's on Telegram or on YouTube saying this bloodline is better than that bloodline, that's something that perhaps maybe maybe be a little bit aware of people saying that because that might not you know perhaps maybe that's not the best thought when it comes to, if you want to go if you want to go service to self then you believe in elitism if you want to go service to others the positive then you don't believe in enslavement you don't believe in, in that type of stuff so that's what they're saying now they're saying that he was trying to harvest to go forth density negative but what happened that made him have to be stuck in the astral and come back, he was unharvestable. He had to get stuck in. So before we can move to the next density, we have to keep coming back to the density we're in until we're harvestable, until we have enough credits basically to graduate. So Mr. Jones was trying to go the negative path, but because he did not have a firm foundation in himself and what he was doing, there was confusion and he stayed in the gray. He was, he was polarizing negative, but negative in the gray. So he got stuck in the astral where he will probably be reincarnated back into a third density life again when the time calls for it to try again. All right. So in reading that, even though it's a law of one, I think that gives us a lot of clarity that this theory out there that um, he was really a good guy and he was going after the bad guys, that that's, that's junk conspiracy. Even if you're a good guy and you're trying to stop the bad guys, you're not going to do to the bad guys what Mr. Jones did to the people he perceived to be less than, if that makes sense. I'm trying to watch my words here, right? You're going to, you're going to still, there's going to still be humanity within you, right? So, and you remember Miss, Mr. Jones here, he went after people because of their ethnic background. He didn't go after people because of their crimes. There's a huge difference, huge difference. I can't believe I have to say this, but I'm saying it. Genocide is wrong. I don't care who you are. It's wrong. Okay. Now, there are some other, we've got Himmler and, yeah, two of the dude, big, big dudes who worked with Mr. Jones. So this will give us even more clarity on what actually happened and hopefully what happened in World War II. So we're looking at Herman and Heinrich Himmler. So questioner, thank you. 
An important I, example, I believe, I was wondering if any of those who were subordinates of Mr. Jones at the time were able to polarize in a harvestable nature on the negative path. Wrong. I am wrong. We can speak of only two entities who may be harvestable in a negative sense, others still being in the physical incarnation. One known to you as Herman, the other known to you, uh, it is preferred to be called Himmler. All right, so two other Nazis basically were harvestable to the negative path. The rest of them are still not harvestable. The rest of them are still living out incarnation cycles and third density. So this is another day. See, so we have the two different times here. Questioner. Let me take an example of the one you said was called Himmler. We are assuming that this is his higher, that his higher self was of sixth density. And it was stated that Himmler had selected the negative path. Would his higher self then dwell in sixth density negative type of situation? Could you expand upon this concept? Ra. I am Ra. There is no negative being which have attained the oversoul manifestation, which is sixth density which is the honor duty of the mind, body, spirit, complex totality of the late sixth density, as you would term it in your time measurement. These negatively oriented mind, body, spirit complexes have a difficulty, which to our knowledge has never been overcome. For after fifth density graduation, wisdom is available, but must be matched with the equal amount of love. This love light is very difficult, very, very difficult to achieve in unity when following the negative path and during the earlier part of the sixth density, society complexes of the negative orientation will choose to release the potential and leap into sixth density positive. So basically, my boyfriend explains, like basically third density, we split fourth density positive, fourth density negative, fifth density positive, fifth density negative. But there's no more after fifth density for the negative. The negative then has to polarize back positive in order to keep going, right? It kind of like loops up positive right so that's what he's saying here there's no sixth density negative eventually has to go positive therefore the oversoul which makes its understanding available to all who are ready for such an aid is towards the positive however the free will of the individual is paramount and any guidance given by the higher self may be seen as either positive or negative polarity depending on the choices of the mind body spirit complex so again i've said this before higher selves don't mean anything what matters is the choices made down here in the mind body spirit complex like when people say it's okay if i read a person i ask their higher self no you have to get permission from the mind body spirit complex from the lower density. you can't the lower density is the one experiencing karma not the higher density it's best it's best if you ask the lower density not you know higher yeah anyway i think you guys get what i'm saying so another another question another session then then using Himmler as an example, was his higher self at the time he was incarnated in the 1940s a sixth density positive oriented? So his higher self was in sixth density, but we know Himmler went negative, as was already stated. I am raw, that is correct. Question, was Himmler in any way in contact with his higher self at the time while he was incarnated in the 1940s? Raw. I am raw. We remind you that the negative path is one of separation, right? So... Even though Himmler's higher self was in the sixth density positive, Himmler chose to go on the negative path. Negative path is one of separation. It's one of elitism. It's one of selfishness. So therefore, on the negative path, he would never try to contact the higher the higher self in, in the positive light. Oops, sorry, guys. I just... Okay, here we go. What is the, fir what is the first separation, the self from the self? The one known as Himmler did not choose to use its abilities of will and polarization to seek guidance from any source, but its consciousness drives self-chosen in this life experience and nourished by previous biases created in other life experiences. Questioner. Well, then let's say, well, then let's say that when Himmler, for instance, reaches sixth density negative at the beginning of the sixth density negative at this time would it be the case that the entity would realize that his higher self was in sixth density positive oriented and for that reason made the jump from negative to positive orientation that is correct so the sixth density negative entity is extremely wise it observes the spiritual entropy occurring during the lack of ability to express the unity of sixth density thus loving the creator and realizing at some point that the creator is not only self but other selves as self the entity consciously chooses 
and instantaneous energy reoriented it so that it may continue to evolve. So I hope you guys get what that means. So as Himmler starts to evolve through his choices, we all have our higher selves staying. Like um, law, law of one also speaks about like fifth density, the density of wisdom. That's kind of the density where the higher self typically hangs, fifth or sixth. And so like when we leave this incarnation, we go and rest in fifth density for a second, and then we're placed back where we need to go back. So whether we're going to fourth density or staying in fifth density or going to sixth density, whatever, before we're placed in the next incarnation. And so what Ra is saying here is that Himmler, like Henrik, like Hitler, well, Hitler tried, but he didn't make it. When he was here on earth, Himmler, who was in our world, we will say was probably one of the most evil human beings. If you know about him or he was effing evil, um, he was on the service to self path, right? That he himself is selfishness. And so he was harvestable to the fourth density negative, like Rasputin, like Genghis Khan. Those are other people that have been spoken about in the law of one. So he went fourth density negative. So as any fourth density negative being as the law of one states, starts to go up the totem pole on the fourth density negative into fifth density when it gets to the point of having to go sixth density that's usually when the negative will repolarize positive by realizing at that point that there are other selves not just this self right um i hope that makes sense i know this might be kind of complicated but basically the whole point of that that i wanted to share with you guys because again for me, it was very concerning to read this comment that there are literal people in the truth of the world that think what Mr. Jones did was a good thing. It's not a good thing. We cannot hurt people, physically hurt people because of their ethnic background or because of their last name. And I believe, it is my opinion, I this is just my speculation, that the powers that be put this particular junk conspiracy out there so that we in the truth of the world would become comfortable and accepting of violence towards other people. If, you know, we, we can't enslave the Rothschilds just because they've enslaved us. Yeah, that's not how any type of enslavement is a negative polarity. And the whole point of the negative path of these negative entities is trying to get us to turn negative. Because if we, if they can turn a positive oriented being negative, then our, our pull us into the gray where we're unharvestable, they win. So again, as the video I did earlier, it's all about your choices. It's all about what you choose to believe and choose to, how you choose to behave. And, um, for me, like that whole junk conspiracy about Mr. Jones in World War II, again, that's been one of the most concerning, absolute concerning things I've seen in this whole movement because there's no basis for this information, first of all. Like somebody, you know, I, I've noticed that in this this group, this movement, that this truth or movement, that somebody will make up a conspiracy and put it on their YouTube channel or their Telegram channel. And then all of a sudden that conspiracy gets spread around the community like it's fact, but there's no proof. There's no evidence. You know, I, I ask people all the time to show me their evidence and what they'll do is send me somebody else's video. Well, that's not evidence. That's somebody else's YouTube video. Uh, what I'm asking you for is lawsuits. It's theses. It's evidence to support your theory not just somebody else is regurgitating the theory, but the actual evidence. And that's, you know, typically when somebody tells me to watch somebody else's video in the comment section, I just delete that comment because that's just, that's just, that's just playing telephone. That's not actual sharing somebody else's YouTube video isn't research. You know, I, I don't want you guys to share my videos and claim that, that my videos are your research. My vid I put my videos out there in order for you to research what I'm saying for yourself, you know, and come to your own conclusion, not to parrot what I'm saying. You know, I, 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 I don't believe in a pecking order. I, I, I want to go positive. I, I don't, I don't want to follow the leader. I don't want to play Simon says, and I don't want anybody enslaved. And when it comes to like the bad guys of this planet, well, first of all, because we're in third density, unfortunately, their density is the density of choice. So, it's polarization. They have a right to be here just as much as we do. Now they do say 
where the earth is like the hardest of the third density planets. But nonetheless, it's a third density planet. It's a polarized planet. That polarization creates friction, which creates choice, right? So they have just as much right to be here as we do. And that's another, you know, when you know the law of one and when you know this template, you won't fall for, you know, I mean, I don't want to say you won't fall. You can still fall for stuff, but it will be harder. Your knowledge is power. Knowledge protects. So for me, like knowing the law of one, I've heard so many people say, oh, the bad guys have capitulated. Well, in my head, I'm like, no, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. Because we're in third density. And also to capitulate or to surrender, that's a positive polarity choice. And the bad guys are trying to go negative. So they're not going to work their whole life to enslave the world to then give it up at the last minute. They're not going to do that. So I feel like for me, that gave me some wisdom navigating this, this truth or world. And I, I appreciate the law of one. I appreciate the Cassiopeians for putting that information out there because knowledge is power. Knowledge protects. Unfortunately, as I've said, I've recently learned that there definitely is an official narrative in the truther community. Just like there's an official narrative in mainstream media, there's an official narrative in the truther community. And both of the official narratives in both the communities are puppeted by the same controllers. It is my, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure in my, actually, I'm going to say I'm 100% sure the truther community is controlled by the cabal. It just is. Uh, because they they know they've they've studied mind control, right? Like I said in the beginning, they've studied this. They know they knew that like ninety percent of the people that woke up would never research for themselves, and they knew that if these people woke up to what the you know the crazy stuff going on in the world, that they would be very easy to convince these people that these other conspiracies were true when they weren't. You know, and and fair play to them. They 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 know us, you know, and, and it's worked because in my opinion, like ninety percent of the truth or community is just a bunch of bullshit. It's not real. Um ninety percent of the conspiracies out there are not real. They're just junk conspiracy put out by the bad guys. It's a Trojan horse, you know, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. And I think too, at least from my experience, knowing, knowing that this polarity, this friction is going to be here until the very end has helped me settle into myself and settle into making my own choices. Like there's just going to be friction until the end. And so therefore for me to take care of myself and to help my friends and family, I've just got to do that. I've just got to take care of my friends and family. I've got to keep working on myself. i got to keep doing the shadow work. i got to keep trying to help other people. I've got to try to make communities with my friends, like you guys on YouTube, and like just continue to live making these choices for myself in the direction that I want to go. And make sure that I'm not being violent. Make sure that I'm being fair. In my assessment of situations, you know, I, I don't want to, I think I've expressed before, one of the first very concerning things I noticed was there was this huge um, personality, this, this, this um, thing going around where people in this community wanted to like unalive anybody that's from particular families. And I was like, whoa, whoa, that's no, no, that's genocide. And just because somebody's born to a particular family or born with a particular last, last name doesn't mean anything. What are their choices? What have they done? You know, we, we look at like the royal family. I mean, look at the kids, uh, George, Charlotte, Lewis. Like those are children. Those are literal children. What are you doing? What are you doing? You, you want to you wanna do, you want to unalive I mean, those are children. If that's what you want to do to those children just because of who their parents are, then you're, in my opinion, you're no better than the cabal. Because they hurt children too. Do you have empathy? Do you have compassion? Can we look at people, you know, Mr. T would say law and order, law and order, law and order. Well, yeah, it's law and order. We, we need to have evidence. We need to have proof of crimes. For individuals, for individuals, not for groups, for individuals.
certainly not because of somebody's last name. And what's interesting to me too, is I think if anybody were to look into their family background, they would find some unsavory people. I know I have plenty of unsavory people in my family background. Does that mean that I'm a bad person? No, of course not. Because I'm an individual making choices for myself. My soul is my responsibility. That's why it's called free will. So anyway, I just, I think my biggest thing is, you know, we love a good whistleblower when it comes to hearing information we want to hear, but sometimes we don't love a whistleblower when the whistleblower is telling us stuff we don't want to hear. That's another thing I've learned. When you try to whistleblow on the truther community, you will be met with vitriol because the truther community loves it when they're being proved right, but they hate it when they're being proved wrong. And for me, as an actual seeker of the truth, I don't, if I'm right or wrong, I just want to know the truth. Right. And I don't want to see people getting hurt. And a lot of these junk conspiracies, especially the junk conspiracy about Mr. Jones and World War II is hurting people. It's hurting people. And so I think we need to be very, very careful. And this person, and, and I, I got read the comment because basically called me an idiot for believing that Mr. Jones was a bad guy. Even if Mr. Jones was after the bad guys, he committed enslavement and genocide. He's not a good guy. So hopefully that helps you have a better perception or a different perception on um, World War II. Again, if you want, I, I really highly suggest reading the Law of One for yourself. As you can see, there are PDF forms of the Law of One, um, but if you go to my Amazon affiliate link, I do have the law of one in my book section as well as the Cassiopeian transcripts. And so, um, yeah, if you're seeking the truth, I would highly suggest that you look at all these different, look at all different perceptions, perspectives, and figure out which one morally aligns. Like what, what is your more, what are your morals telling you about what's right and wrong? You know? So anyway, I hope that makes sense. If you really want a good laugh, you can look at what the raw material says about Jesus. I was giggling. I was like reading that last night and they were like, who? Like when they kept asking about Jesus, they're like, who? Who? What are you talking about? They were like, oh, that guy. You know, that's not his name, right? And they were like, you know, that's not his name, right? I was, I was dying laughing. And they talked a lot about Moses. You know, Moses started off as a positive being and got turned negative real fast real fast they talked about you know the bible being a negatively polarized book they talk about why that is why it's negatively polarized and my boyfriend's like duh he's just like duh look at all the look at all the violence christianity has created of course it's negatively polarized and i laughed i was like yeah you're right it's literally done nothing good it's done nothing but destruction um you know it's it's uh and you see it with moses moses was turned he he most of his life he he was a pot he started off positive and he got turned negative totally turned to the service of self. Um, you know, they talk about the Ten Commandments being negatively polarized because it's thou shalt not. Like if you look at the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which are very similar to the Ten Commandments, but in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, he doesn't say thou shalt not. He says ahimsa. He just goes ahimsa, just don't be, you know, ahimsa, how can I say this? Nonviolence. Perhaps it's best to practice nonviolence. Perhaps it's best to be truthful. If you want to live a good life, perhaps it's best to be clean. Perhaps it's best to praise God. That's kind of how it's written in the Yoga Sutras. But in the Ten Commandments, it's thou shalt not, thou shalt not, which when you say thou shalt not, it immediately turns it negative. When it, when you, because what that does is it opens up to things like, you know, unaliving people which we see in the old testament if someone breaks that commandment all of a sudden they're less than because thou shalt not and they run the risk of being unalive which is all over the old testament it's very fascinating you guys very fascinating to look at raw's perspective and the spiritual perspective of of these things um it's interesting to read about some of the founding fathers of america uh one was i can't remember which one one was a walk-in um the other was just an average guy who made incredible decisions yeah so it's it's interesting to read these things and again always take everything with a grain of salt just because i'm speaking about this right now i'm not telling you to believe it we're just speculating we're just looking at what it has to say um i do believe the law of one when they talk about mr jones and his his posse of, of people 
um, because that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. It's logical. I never once felt like they were good guys by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, so yeah, and we do have grandparents and ancestors that most of us know who survived these atrocities, who saw it firsthand, you know, and so and have the, the PTSD and the trauma to show for it. So anyway, you guys, I just, um, I, I just, you know, maybe it's best that we just always keep open minds and we realize maybe it's best that we just be smart about this. And we realize that of course, of course, the truth or community is corrupted. Of course it is. Of course it is. We're in third density. Of course it's interrupted. The law of one also speaks about that. Anytime somebody comes around with a good idea to help humanity, like to genuinely help humanity, guess what? The service to self, negative entities, are going to follow right behind it and corrupt it always always so with that logic of course the truth or community is corrupted of course it is of course there's junk conspiracy of course it's been corrupted to turn people in the truth or community to service to self of course you know so that means that you just got to take care of you and make sure that you are not service to, unless you want to be service to self unless that's your choice to go service to self instead of service to others. But but nonetheless, I would highly suggest, and I'm, that's another suggestion I'm going to make too, before you cast judgment on this information, why not just read the book for yourself? Maybe sometimes it's better to understand something after you've had a deeper look at it. You know? Like I used to have a professor that would say, go have a little think, go have a little think. Like we'd be talking about a topic or something, a theory in creative writing or something. And then he'd be like, and we just kind of be talking about, like, you know what, just go have a little think about it. Just go have a little think about it. Maybe that's what's best. Maybe instead of making quick judgments on something, we like have a little think about it and we read it and we let it kind of sit for a minute and sit within us for and integrate into our psyche for a minute before we make our decisions. You know, as Aristotle said, it's a sign of an intelligent mind. When you can entertain an idea without accepting, entertaining ideas does not mean that you accept them. You're just entertaining them. You know, so instead of quick reaction, reactionary, you know, I, I think sometimes quick reactionary responses are more signs of, of your own projections and mine too, when I do it, than actual integrity of thought. You know, if that makes sense. So anyway, if you are interested in doing deeper research for yourself, which again, I highly suggest you do that. I don't want to be the bearer of information. I want you to be able, you know, I can tell you about it, but you go and get it for yourself and do your own self-study with this. But all that stuff is down in the Amazon affiliate link, along with the Cassiopeian transcript, all of Lyra Knight's writing the wave books, like I do the wave and um, the Emerald tablets, all that kind of stuff. So I highly suggest that you Get that information for yourself. All right. Okay, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please be careful in the comment section because um, Big Brother is watching. We'll just put it that way. So let's use Mr. Jones. How about that, Mr. Jones? Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon.